Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What is up, YouTube? This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and this is the video, brand new Kenwood THD74 Alpha tri-band handheld with APRS, D-Star, and so many more features. We're going to stumble through this together. I have uh, the I had the ability to look at this at Dayton and play around with it just a tad, but I lost the video footage uh, from the flight, I guess, through the X-ray machine. So, Gigaparts. Let me check this out. Brand new. I think it just came out. And they said, hey, Eric, check this out. This is cool. And we're going to go through this together. If you're interested in this radio, this, guys, is a game changer. I, I am impressed. Um, and not to be a comparative video with an ICOM D-Star handheld, uh, when I mention some things, I'm going to reference it to my ID51 because that's a this is a very popular radio. But... This thing has so many more features than the ID51, so I can directly compare it to something that uh, another radio wouldn't have at all. So again, gigaparts.com, check this out. I haven't even opened the manual. I haven't even played with this yet. We're going to do it together right on the radio, because, or right on the video here, because I like seeing how to do it um, without sitting down. But I will mention, you might want to go through the menu on this, because uh, there's a lot of features that you can learn, and a lot that you will use. So um, let's check this out. The link is in the description, by the way, for uh, for purchase through Gigaparts. So thank you for sending that Gigaparts, and hopefully I get to check out a lot more new radios as they uh, uh, really rate, I mean, immediately as they come out. This is right here. So looking at the radio itself, um, one of the biggest things that you notice when you turn it on is it has a color screen. Okay, and uh, a full DTMF keypad on the front. So that's one thing right there I like because it has the APRS in it. You kind of have to have the DTMF keypad with the letters so that you can write SMS messages. And for those who want to say APRS is not functional anymore or is outdated, please check First, subscribe to my channel, and then check out my APRS video that I did. There's still a lot of people that are using APRS. It is a great uh, tactical information pipeline for ham radio, and with it being built in directly to this radio with a TNC, um, it's it's really useful with this. You won't have to have anything external like my little TNCs, okay? But we'll get into that in a second. So... Full DTMF keypad, a waterproof design from what I understand. Um, looking at the radio, it is a little bit bigger. If you want to compare it to something like an ID51, it's a little bit thicker. That's got the belt clip on it. But looking at the body size, there's a direct comparison of what the size is. Um, a little bit taller, a little bit meatier, and a little bit thicker. Um, about the same weight in, in uh, weight. Okay. Um, so on the right side here the famous Kenwood style speaker mic. Uh, technically, your speaker mics that you may have from an Ushan or a Bofeng or even a Kenwood with the 2.5 millimeter and 3.5 millimeter will fit. If you have a lapel mic or a headset, it will fit into there because it's a standard Ken Kenwood design. Micro SD card. A lot of these radios nowadays, I'm imagining this will handle 32 or 64 gigs. I haven't really got the exact specification, but um, it will handle the micro SD in here so that you can save repeater lists, memory uh, functions, and recording conversations on D-Star, much like you can do on another uh, radio. Uh, USB. Now, this is cool because this is a standard micro USB port. You can get an RT Systems cable and software to program this. Also, my understanding is you can use a standard micro SD or micro USB card, I'm sorry, micro USB cable, like you would with a Samsung Galaxy phone or a lot of other phones now, plug this directly into the computer and use the MCP D74 program from Kenwood, which is memory control program. And you can read and write memories right to the radio out of the box 
with that cable. So you can do it a little bit easier with the RT systems. That's kind of like a go-to for people that have these ICOMs and the ASUS. Uh, RT Systems does make a wide array of programming cable and software for a lot of different radios. But for those who don't want to do that, you can use a micro USB cable and um, probably a lot of other features as well um, for that, memories and uh, for the TNC functions. Your charging port right here that comes with the specific programming or uh, wall word adapter and your PTT button, power button and your squelch and monitor button. So. On the top here underneath is where your GPS is. I think Kenwood might still use the Surfstar chip where I may be outdated, honestly. Um, but it does have GPS built in for the APRS and the D-Star. So comparable to the Yaesu and ICOM radios with the, with the GPS. But what this does have that a lot others do not have is Bluetooth. So what I'm gonna do is let's just touch on a couple different things in the menu and um, a couple different features. And I, I said, we'll walk through it together and uh, check it out and show you some of the features that this thing has. So the menu is cool. Menu is icon based. There's nine icons on here. And um, some of the features that are included on this radio are, are very basic to everybody with CTCSS tones and transmit and receive functions and stuff like that. There are filters on here. There is a scan. There is Vox. There is DTMF. Um, but other things like GPS, okay? So you can turn GPS on and off. The GPS works with the D-Star portion of the radio as well as the APRS portion. The GPS output can go to PC, possibly through USB and Bluetooth, but the GPS uh, can be saved. The waypoints and tracks can also be saved on the USB or the uh, micro SD card which is right here, SD card. So I don't have one in here, but you can import, export, and uh, format and do all that stuff, the functions there. Let me show you the Bluetooth. Why I want to, I'm really impressed that this has Bluetooth because of two things. One, I can, right now, I have my Galaxy S4 paired to the D74 on Bluetooth, and I'm using the APRS Droid app. So now I can use APRS functions on my phone, like messaging, emails, as well as messaging to and from cell phones. Yes, you can do that. Again, go check out my video on the APRS in my channel, and it'll show you how to do all that. But the TNC built inside, and it pairs, the whole radio pairs with Bluetooth, so that is a great feature. No cables to get in the way, and you know something like I've had here before, this is a micro TNC that's Bluetooth and Arduino-based. I'm not going to get into it because the inventor tells me they don't want my video support. However, that was a cumbersome way of connecting with a cable to a computer, then a, a Bluetooth to a radio, or a, you know manually to a radio, then Bluetooth to a computer, or this. Now you can do it all wirelessly. That easy, all right? Bluetooth is is awesome. You can also use Bluetooth with a USB dongle on your PC and use that same MCP D74 program I told you about, the memory control program, and program the radio over Bluetooth. Awesome. No cables again. You can program it wirelessly over Bluetooth. How about this? Full HF receive on your radio from 0.1 kilohertz to 523 megahertz, but it does cover all the amateur bands upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. So I could just type in a frequency, uh, if I go to 10 meters, there's 10 meters uh, right there, upper side. Now, of course, with the antenna on here, uh, is really not specifically tuned for HF. So if you hook this up to a portable loop antenna with an adapter, it'd be great. You can receive while you're on the go, hook it up to your uh, Tar Heel on the truck mobile, or if you have a Tar Heel, evidently you have a HF rig. But you can receive uh, even um, down to 80 meters, up to uh, 20 meters, okay? And then you can hit mode here in upper sideband, CW, AM, lower sideband, all right? So you can change those. Very cool to, uh, you can not transmit for anybody asking, but you can receive. So FM. Two meters, you hold the right arrow, you can go into 220 or 1.25 meters, 
70 centimeters. Okay. Then you can hit mode and go into DV mode. And someone asked me, does it have DR mode? I don't think it has DR mode. Well, actually, yes, it does. If you hit function and then you hit digital, now you can go here in the digital function menu and you can go to right here, DV, DR, select. Now you're in DR mode. And at this time, now you can set your other functions, such as, we'll go back into the digital menu. You can go into destination select, such as reflector, use reflector, link reflector, unlink, repeater info, and such. You can go to your, uh, it shows you as you modify your my call sign, RPT1, RPT2, and the UR. Voice and data mode. So right now I'm in data mode. And that would be strictly for high-speed digital data, or you can go voice mode, okay? And that voice mode is with the uh, digital voice with your GPS coordinates. So in DR mode, you can go into the menu and go to memory, and I have a repeater list, okay? By North America, USA, and different groups in here, okay? Connecticut, Maine, and there's a bunch of ways a bunch of uh, repeaters in here in these lists. And you can update this list and add your own when different groups. It's a little bit different than an ID51 and adding groups and such, but it's basically the same principle. Again, you do have all the features of the DR mode and such in this. Call sign list, memory channel and such. What I like, one thing I like about the menu here is when you look at the manual, it'll tell you go to menu 220. So 220 in the menu would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So number two would be memory. And then zero, one, two. So I'd go to two. And then zero. That's menu 220. Okay. Uh, if you want a menu 600, six, zero, zero. Receive history. Okay. That's a cool thing I like about how to uh, the structure of the menu. And uh, audio files. So the, the voice uh, recording file or voice message. This is where you can set, you know, recording band A or recording band B. So you, you can record digital contacts to the SD card as if you could with a uh, ICOM D-Star handheld. Another cool thing is if you push number nine here, because again, the menu or the shortcuts are on the DTMF keypad. If I push number nine, I can set the balance of volume for band A and band B. So I can independently set them if I want band A 100% and band B 50% uh, or vice versa. Okay. Um, other things on here such as, let's see, if I wanted to go just to um, simplex mode on VHF for DV. Okay, that fast. I can just hit number three and it shows uh, the call frequency on UHF. And let's see. Yeah, see, you can switch it to the calling frequency for 1.25 meters. Or not, not the calling frequency, but there you go. Calling frequency in digital mode, CQ, CQ. Okay. GPS is up here. And you can disable that just by pushing pound. That turns the GPS right off. So a lot of the functions are right here without having to get into the menu. So overall, this thing is pretty neat. What I'd like to do is uh, make a part two real quick of maybe this radio versus an ID51 with me in the other room. The local repeater that we have on D-Star, uh, the reflector is down or the reflector's up, but the internet connection is down. So I can't use my DV Mega to go in through it and uh, chat with somebody. So I'll kind of give myself an uh, example over the radio and you can watch it here on this video of what the audio sounds like compared to 9051. I know a lot of people are interested, is the, is the audio quality better? Maybe they like their current radio, but it's just the volume which has suffered on the other one. Um, this, we'll see how this sounds uh, compared. We'll do one and then we'll do the other and see how it sounds. Okay. So I'm in uh, across the house in the other room. And right now I have that radio that you're looking at set at 50% volume, like number 22 out of or 21 out of 39, it looks like 50% on the uh, on the meter. 
So, with me talking about three inches away from the mic, uh, 50% volume, and uh, this is the mic audio quality as well as the speaker quality on the ID51. Um, giving you, and I do have, uh, if you're looking at it, I do have a H2 antenna on the ID51 because I can't find the ID51 stock antenna. So let me uh, switch over now and we'll go to the ID51 into the THD74 Alpha and see what the speaker quality of the Kenwood sounds like. Okay, this is me on my ID51 talking into the THD74 Alpha and about three inches away from the mic. The Kenwood you're looking at is set to 50% volume on the knob. So at 50% volume, this is the different in, difference in audio. And I think a lot of the difference of the quality is honestly the waterproof membrane design that the radio I'm talking on had covering the speaker and the mic. I think Kenwood had a little bit better idea and a little bit better design for that, which in turn, with the circuitry they used, of course, and a different kind of speaker probably made the improvement. That's, to me, that's the biggest improvement because I have issues when I'm driving around with the truck running and stuff. Unless I'm holding it to my ear, I have an issue hearing somebody. But in this situation, it seems like it's a little bit better. And uh, with the color screen, it looks a little more robust as I'm talking in digital mode. So I hope the camera is making a a uh, doing it justice. I know a, a direct audio sample on a computer might be a little bit better, but you kind of get the idea. This is KJ4YZI. Another cool feature, the FM broadcast radio menu down here, FM broadcasting. We'll turn that on. FM radio. Okay, cool little, you know, I like the little uh, nostalgic tuning, the red, remember the red line on the old radios where you tune back and forth. Um, you can set memories in here, but... Um, they can be placed almost anywhere and operate 24-7. It does have FM broadcast radio. Very good. If somebody breaks in on the, on the uh, frequency that you're on, it will go back to the frequency, and after so, so many seconds, it'll go back to FM radio. So it is, not, it is uh, like a dual watch for FM radio and, and uh, amateur communications. Well, guys, I'm glad I got to go through this together with you. If you're interested in something like this, maybe this brought a little bit of uh, advice or demonstration to you so you can get a little better feel. There's so many functions and features. I can't make a video and show you how to use this radio. It would just take entirely too long. What I really want to do is touch on the main point and give you a look at it so that you can get familiar with the radio and see what it is that you're after if you're interested in this radio. And so many things I didn't touch on because of the features that are there that I don't have time to cover. But Anyways, the THD74 from Gigaparts.com who sent this to me. Thank you, Gigaparts. And I'm hoping to get this in my hands some more. I will have this radio soon. And I will hope to do some more videos. Maybe we can check out the APRS on it using direct APRS functionality on the front. As well as programming with maybe RT systems and some other stuff. And show you how to do that. So thanks for watching. Check out the videos I have on my channel. Subscribe right down below. There's a click button. Subscribe. Stay tuned. Facebook.com slash ham radio concepts. Still in progress. Ham radio concepts.com. And as always, 7-3 from KJ4YZI.